Armor is a mechanic in Smash that lets fighters take damage from an attack while taking no knockback or reduce knockback. There are several kinds of armor in Smash Ultimate, with some of them being exclusive to specific characters. I'll go over each of the major kinds of armor, followed by some examples. Super Armor is the one most people will think of first. No matter how much damage or knockback a fighter takes from an attack, they will not flinch nor take any knockback. You can easily see this effect in pretty much any boss battle in Smash, as these bosses never flinch against any of your attacks. Super Armor is present in many different moves, with no real rhyme or reason as to which moves have it. Perhaps the most infamous example is Little Mac's Smash Attacks, all of which have Super Armor. This Super Armor is the reason that Mac's ground game is considered so good, as it makes challenging him up close a big mistake. Though sometimes, Max punches might not hit opponents when they really should have, which is stupid, but I digress. Mac also has super armor in his KO uppercut, so challenging this move up close is also a bad idea. Unless you attack fast enough, or stay a good distance away. But nothing is stopping you from grabbing the opponent out of their attack. This is the one weakness of all armor-based attacks. A lot of these moves are very slow to counterbalance their armor, and they're also unsafe on shield. The second type is damage-based armor. This works the same as super armor, but with one key difference. If the attacker is hit by an attack that does enough damage, they will flinch and stop the attack. The damage threshold is different for every move that has damage-based armor. For the most part, this armor is used by super heavyweights to help with their slow but powerful attacks. In these cases, the damage threshold is very low, generally being around 8%. This makes damage-based armor very matchup dependent, as characters with higher average damage outputs can easily break through this type of armor. Moves with this armor are also unsafe when blocked or missed, so you have to be careful when using them but you can still grab the opponent with no trouble. I should also mention that there are technically two kinds of damage-based armor, cumulative and non-cumulative. Cumulative damage armor will account for all the damage that the fighter takes from a series of hitboxes before the armored attack is unleashed. The only instance of cumulative damage armor is King K. Rool's Crown Orang. It has a threshold of 12% damage. If you're able to hit K. Rule for at least that much damage across all of your hitboxes, the armor will break and he will flinch. Sometimes, due to floating point errors, certain moves that don't reach above the damage threshold can still break the armor. All other instances of damage-based armor are non-cumulative. Every hitbox you throw out is judged against the damage threshold separately, not cumulatively. For example, Snake's Cypher has 7% damage-based armor, which is non-cumulative. This means you need to hit Snake with a single blow that deals at least that much damage to break the armor. The third and final major type is Knockback-based armor. This armor stops a player from taking knockback until it reaches a certain amount. There are two types of this kind of armor, subtractive and non-subtractive. The very first instance of knockback-based armor is Yoshi's Double Jump. This jump uses a subtractive system to resist enemy attacks based on their attack strength and the armor itself. Yoshi's Double Jump will subtract 120 knockback units from whatever knockback he receives. If the result is negative, the armor tanks the hit entirely and Yoshi does not flinch. If the result is positive, the attack breaks through but Yoshi will suffer less knockback than normal. Bowser and Kazuya have passive knockback armor respectively called Tough Guy and Tough Body. These have much lower knockback thresholds than Yoshi's Double Jump, only tanking 19 and 14 units of knockback respectively. These passive armors are non-subtractive, meaning that the fighters will take full knockback if their armor is broken. This armor can also take advantage of crouch cancelling, which reduces knockback on players who are crouching the moment they get hit. This armor is heavily dependent on percent damage, as knockback is calculated based on percentage. The longer a game goes on, the less effective this type of armor becomes. 
fighters that hit harder can completely ignore this armor, and Rage can also help break this armor more easily. Lastly, going back to K. Rule, he has an entirely unique armor system exclusive to him thanks to his gold-plated belly armor. This armor is not passive, as it only works during specific attacks. Here are all the attacks that use the belly armor. K. Rule's belly armor has 18.01 HP to work with. But since this armor splits the incoming damage between itself and K. Rule 50-50, it's more like 36.02 HP. The armor regenerates 0.08 HP every 16 frames, or around 0.3 HP per second. This means it takes around 1 minute to fully recover the belly armor's health. One key factor to remember is the 1v1 damage multiplier. Whereas every other form of armor does not factor in the 1v1 multiplier, K. Rule's belly armor does factor it in. This is because the belly armor takes the final damage output that it tanks and splits it up between itself and K. Rule half and half. Other damage multipliers like Monado Arts, Ink, Revenge, and others also affect the belly armor, which can make the armor surprisingly easy to break in some situations. Stale move negation also factors into breaking the armor. Completely fresh moves deal more damage and can break the armor faster, while stale moves are weaker and break it more slowly. The belly armor visually cracks open to show how much health it has left. When it has 11.5 HP left, it cracks a little bit. When it has 6.1 HP left, it cracks a lot. When it reaches 0 HP, it breaks and leaves K. Rule dizzy, as if he just got his shield broken. Just like all other types of armor, K. Rule's belly armor cannot be used against unblockable attacks, grabs, or command grabs. Lastly, the belly armor only protects K. Rule's stomach. It does not protect his face or backside, which means carefully positioning your attacks so they don't hit his belly is a viable strategy. If you play K. Rule, managing this armor system is crucial to success. You don't want to get caught by an ultra-powerful move that breaks your armor instantly. On the other hand, you can use it to challenge moves that would otherwise make you flinch and get some nasty KOs as a result. Hey there, thanks for watching this video. If you've made it this far, I just want to say I really appreciate you watching until the end. This video took a lot of time to make, so you could spread it around to people you know, that would help a lot. Also, I'd really appreciate a follow on Twitch, where I'm streaming at least once a week. I'll always leave updates on my YouTube community tab about when and what I'm streaming. Thanks again for watching, I really appreciate your viewership. See you next time.